The 1800s gave us the first steam locomotive, the first commercial light bulb, the first matchbox, and Coca-Cola. But before we dive into the fascinating story of ketchup, we need to acknowledge the less desirable inventions of the 19th century, including the peculiar ketchup pill. Yes, you heard that right. Ketchup in pill form. Hold on to your taste buds because this is going to be a wild ride. Today, it isn't easy to see ketchup as anything besides the sweet tomato sauce for our fries and burgers. Popular ketchup maker Heinz sells over 650 million ketchup, and the condiment is found in 97% of American homes. How then did this beloved sauce become a prescription pill? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we will cover the odd history of tomato ketchup. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell to avoid missing future updates. Despite its immense popularity in the United States, ketchup did not originate from the New World. The earliest ketchup recipes are found in southern China and date back to 300 BC. In the southern Min dialect, it was called getchup or kochup. It was made from fish entrails, soybeans, and meat byproducts. Through trade, the sauce spread from China to Indonesia and the Philippines. By the 1700s, British and Dutch traders liked the sauce and brought it to Europe. British chefs added new ingredients to the original recipe, and soon, various recipes were found in cookbooks. In the 18th century, ketchup entered its golden age. It was initially called catsup after being introduced to Europe, and it was first called ketchup in 1711. The new variant was based on mushrooms with oysters, anchovies, elderberries, and fruits added to enrich its taste. It was boiled into a thick syrup, added salt, and left to ferment, creating a salty and spicy sauce. From fish to mushroom, ketchup was starkly different from the Heinz's 57 varieties we have now. So, when did it evolve from its current form? In 1812, James Meese, a Philadelphia scientist, added tomato to the ketchup recipe and developed the first tomato ketchup. Brandy and spices were the other ingredients of his tomato-based ketchup. Surprisingly, his tomato ketchup was more popular than raw tomatoes, which were called love apples. Tomatoes traced their origin to South America and were brought to England in the 16th century. It was initially unpopular because it was thought to be poisonous. The belief might have been caused by the lead poisoning of English aristocrats who ate in lead pewter. Tomatoes leached lead from the plates, which led to lead poisoning. The result was that tomatoes were planted in flower pots as ornaments. The plant was also considered an aphrodisiac, hence the medieval French name, love apples. Mises tomato ketchup was popular because people thought it was safer to eat tomatoes as processed food containing other ingredients. However, this was not our modern version, as it was less dense and did not include later innovations like vinegar and sugar. But before Heinz brought these innovations, there was the tomato pill. In 1834, Dr. John Cook Bennett created a tomato ketchup recipe he touted as medicinal. He turned his recipe into pills which gave them an air of legitimacy. These tomato pills were advertised as the cure for diarrhea, jaundice, indigestion, rheumatism, and violent bilis attacks. Bennett graduated from the Lake Erie University in 1825 and later became a professor of midwifery at the institution. He was also the president of the university's Willoughby Medical College and practiced medicine in Ohio. After releasing his tomato pills, Bennett became a tomato evangelist. He published several works on the plant, gave lectures, and claimed endorsement by the Scotch and French Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons in Montreal, although he did not scientifically test his theories. The war began in 1837, and the battlefield was the National Dailies. Archibald Miles, a Cleveland-based businessman, was the first to begin advertising his tomato-based miracle drug in national newspapers. The pills were called Dr. Miles' Compound Extract of Tomato, 
and the ads claimed that they cured several illnesses, from mild indigestion to STDs. Soon, another brand of tomato pills emerged on the market. Dr. Guy R. Phelps, a physician, advertised the compound tomato pills. His pills promised similar results as Miles, and his counterpart was not pleased. Archibald Miles had zero tolerance for competitors, and when he found out about the compound tomato pills, he went for the attack. An anonymous article appeared in the New York Journal of Commerce, which called Phelps a quack and his pills a baseless imitation. The article was undoubtedly the brainchild of Miles, and it was the first shot fired in the tomato pill war. It was not the first time vegetables were being touted as medicinal drugs. Sarsaparilla, mustard, dandelion, and rhubarb have all been promoted as miracle drugs. However, the mania that followed the tomato pills was unexpected because tomatoes were unpopular. Before Mies invented tomato ketchup, and then Bennis toting of the medicinal properties of the plant, tomatoes were not eaten by the British. Nevertheless, the tomato pill business boomed. And for the next two years, Miles and Phelps would go back and forth to the delight of newspaper editors. Phelps replied to Miles' article in the New York Journal of Commerce with a published letter. In his letter, he said, about as much claim to the title of doctor as my horse and no more. Dr. John Bennett urged Americans to eat a lot of tomatoes, stressing that it was the quintessential wonder plant. He predicted that the chemicals responsible for its healing properties would be extracted in the future, and both Miles and Phelps claimed to have done so. After Phelps' letter, he kept strides at demeaning his competitor and insisting Miles stole his pill formula. Miles replied by putting endorsement ads in the newspapers that claimed compound tomato extract was the original tomato pill and every other pill was a fraud. He argued that the low price of Phelps pills proved that tomatoes were not used to make them. His supply chain covered the area between the Gulf Coast and the Canadian border. With such a stretch, he got the news around swiftly. The banter went back and forth for years and gave the feud infamy. Newspaper editors published the most incredulous articles for a piece of ad revenue, and readers devoured each story fervently. Eventually, the public discovered a shocking truth. Neither of their pills contained tomatoes, but were filled with laxatives. But how did the sham last for so long? Did it cure any illnesses? Although tomatoes are rich in beneficial antioxidants, it is not an herb and it only serves as a source of nutrients. However, psychology plays a huge role in healing, and the con men used it to their advantage. Patients who thought it cured a particular ailment would unwittingly perform actions leading to their recovery or willed their bodies into fighting those diseases. Also, most illnesses in the 19th century resulted from consuming high salty, fatty, and starchy content and drinking polluted water. Tomato pills, fortunately, replaced mercury pills previously prescribed by doctors, which only worsened the illness. The war between Miles and Phelps ended in 1839 for reasons yet unknown. Miles invested his fortune in Ohio real estate, but refused to drop the title of doctor. Phelps founded an insurance company in Connecticut while still selling his pills. Although the ads stopped and several critics of tomato pills emerged, more quacks continued to sell them until the 1850s. By then, Americans had begun to eat so many tomatoes that buying tomato pills was unnecessary. Bennett, Miles, and Phelps had pulled a big scam on the Americans, but the love of tomatoes they ignited was real. Today, tomatoes are the second most eaten vegetable in the United States. In 1869, 25-year-old Henry John Heinz began to sell his mother's horseradish in clear glass jars from the family's basement and it was a big success. Heinz would expand his business to include pickles and vinegar, and the most successful of all was tomato ketchup. In 1876, decades after the tomato pill craze, Heinz tweaked the catsup recipe by adding vinegar, brown sugar, salt, and spices. Tomato, of course, remained the main ingredient. Thus, the modern tomato ketchup was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His recipe would prove to be a mind-blowing success, and over a century after the founding of H.J. Heinz Company,
tomato ketchup is still its biggest product. The company sells its ketchup globally, and although there have been some alterations to the original recipe, it has mainly stayed the same. Centuries and hundreds of recipes later, ketchup has become a part of the American home. Today, it is an American symbol, and a bottle is never far away. From french fries to burgers to tacos, ketchup is an all-rounder condiment millions enjoy. It is difficult to believe that the sauce was once sold as medicine and sounds ridiculous, but now you know the twisted tale of tomato ketchup. Thank you for staying with us until the end. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.